like to move on to a uh, uh, lay person, Dr. Kondo, for her presentation, please. Thank you very much, uh, Professor, uh, Professor Tokuda. Um, today, I would like to brief for big data from the points of security, mentioning two activities by Japanese government agencies on this game. Next slide, please. Yes. Um, well, firstly, I'd like to talk about the definition of information security. Um, here, I'm, I'm going to use the word information security from a rather technical point of view. But I'm not talking about information security policy or cyber security policy, but here I'd like to talk about information security from the point of technical world. And uh, uh, information security is to uh, preserve the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information systems. And as you can see in the slide, Confidentiality refers to the protection of information from unauthorized access or disclosure. Uh, integrity refers to uh, the protection of information from unauthorized modification or disruption. Availability refers to the protection of information and uh, information systems from unauthorized disruption. And actually, recent cyber incidents or attacks are actually uh, information security threats which caused the situation to lose at least one of those elements. And when you talk about big data or cloud computing, you also need to consider those three elements. The causes of information leakage or loss may change, or these risks may increase because using big data. Next slide, next slide, please. Um, in this slide, I'd like to briefly introduce you recent cyber incident cases. Uh, as we all know, in 2009, there were DDoS attacks against U.S. and South Korean government institutions, including the White House and the Office of the President of South Korea. In 2010, the very famous one, Stuxnet, Stuxnet uh, attack against Iranian nuclear power plants, so-called. And in 2011, illegal intrusion into Sony U.S. subsidiary networks was occurred, and a maximum of 77 million customer information was leaked. Next, please. And this, um, actually, in 2011, things getting worse, and, uh, let's see, yes, in 2011, in September, with the heavy industry, as well as the House of Representatives, was attacked by targeted email or the official email, and infected. And in 2012, over 1 million personal information was leaked by downloading smartphone applications. So after that, there are lots of cyber incidents and cyber attacks. And as you can see, cyber threats have become more large scale, advanced, and sophisticated, and some are occurred because of holding big data. In other words, the value of big data increases with wider usage. Risks surrounding big data are also include, uh, increasing. Next, please. On this slide, describes co um, coordination mechanism for information security policies in Japan. Sorry for very small characters. Um, key organizations are Information Security Policy Council, ISPC, and NISC, National Information Security Center. Um, ISPC was established in 2005 and is the supreme body for endorsing important information security policies in Japan. And our chief cabinet secretary chairs ISPC, supported by a minister of IT policy. And the members are like ministers of National Public Safety Commission and MIG, MOFAR, METI, and MOD. And there are also executive members from private sectors, and actually Professor Murai and Professor Tsuchiya are a member of the ISPC. And NISC, the middle one, NISC was established also in 2005. Uh, NISC is a secretariat of ISPC and has mainly two, uh, no, three roles. One is to facilitate information security efforts of the government agencies. And the second one is to promote public-private partnership for enhancing information security of the private sector and also individuals, including awareness writing activities. Thirdly, NISC plays a role as point of contact, contact for international affairs regarding cyber security policy issues. 
Uh, next, uh, uh, Professor, Professor Tsuchiya mentioned, we just published Japan new, new cyber security strategy last week for public consultation. The new strategy mentions to empowerment of NISC to counteract increasing cyber threats. So next, please. So now let me back to big data security. Uh, in this slide, I tried to depict how big data from here we see data holders, the left side, which include government agencies, um, critical infrastructure operators such as telecommunications, SNS operators such as Facebook or Twitter, convenience stores collecting the customer purchase history, and electric mall operators, and so on. And this data includes such as individual purchase history and messages through SNS, business transaction history, and results of surveys, data collected by home appliances and vending machines with sensors, and meteorological data filed by sensors. So that's the left side and the yep, uh, lower side of the slide. And here we see data priors, is the right upper side, um, who analyze and utilize big data provided by big data holders. And data holders themselves also can become a big data priors. Uh, big data are now mainly used for providing more customized services to individuals and business marketing, as, as we said, the right uh, lower side of this slide. And in the, new future, in the near future, big data will be also utilized for controlling social or critical infrastructures, as transportation and electricity. And furthermore, here are cloud services, the, the upper one, services which facilitate storage and analysis of big data. And the next slide, please. And this slide overlaid big data risks on the previous slide. And as for data storage, uh, so this is not only for big data, you need to consider data loss or leakage risk. In the process of providing data, privacy invasion may occur. For individuals, if too much customized service is provided, they might not take it comfortable, rather feel weird, like, why do you know so much about me? It's kind of weird. So which might be a business risk from the point of customer satisfaction. And as for sensors, they exist end-to-end -end security risk, as discussed recently. And when big data is utilized for controlling social infrastructure, in case these are compromised by cyber attack things, then it should damage social activities seriously. And furthermore, by using cloud services for data storage or analysis, risks of data loss or leakage may increase, since basically you cannot directly control your data on cloud systems. Next, please. And this slide summarizes risks surrounding big data. So there are mainly two risks. One is risk relating to information security, and the other one is risk relating to privacy. Uh, for each of them, same risks need to be considered as existing services. At the same time, you also need to recognize that since big data contains huge volume of information, so if something happens, damage of impact might also severe. Um, as for new challenges in the, in the blue, um, blue, blue, um, blue squares, you need to consider cloud computing security from the point of information security. Um, when big data will be used for controlling critical infrastructure systems such as transportation and electricity in the future, you need to consider social, economic, and even national security impacts. And actually, I'm not talking about privacy issues here, since they have been already well discussed in the morning session. Um, one thing I may highlight is the issue of unintended privacy invasion as a result of analyzing data from multiple sources. So next, please. Um, here, I'd like to mention to crowd security, which dominates big data security. As I mentioned before, you need to consider that risks specific to cloud computing increase if you utilize cloud services for big data storage or analysis. And of course, I should mention that by using commercial cloud services, since experts dedicate to preserving information security, 
and also from the point of disaster countermeasures, security might be also well assured. And as for crime computing risks for information security, an inter-European network and information security agency issued a report in 2009. And in the report, ANISA analyzed cloud computing risks as, as listed here, like policy and organizational risks, technical risks, legal risks, and risks not specific to the cloud. And this is 35 risks. And next point. Yes. And these are the 35 risks raised by ANISA. And I will note that risks as insecure or in uh, ineffective deletion of data, uh, such as data leakage or risks from changes of jurisdiction. These kind of risks uh, especially have severe impact on big data business and should be well recognized. Next slide, please. Yes. And however, the important thing is to manage risks and to utilize these services with confidence. And this is the result of survey conducted by METI on concerns for using cloud services. According to the survey, most of the potential users express concern for information security measures by cloud service providers. Next, please. In order to reduce these concerns for cloud security and promote using cloud services, METI published Information Security Management Guidelines for the Use of Cloud Computing Services in 2011, which includes such indicators as standard measures for choosing cloud service providers. Um, other than these kind of uh, guidelines, there are several guidelines for secure cloud services, as guidelines for um, information disclosure on the reliability of data centers by NIC, and guidelines for SMEs secure cloud use by IPA I should. And I think these guidelines contribute enough to establish the environment for facilitating cloud use by providing risk management measures. Uh, next, please. Um, other than cloud computing, in the future, if big data are used for maintaining or controlling critical infrastructures, Data loss, this should be the availability of information security, or unauthorized modification, this is the intuitive security, may impact social, economic, and even national security activities. And as the value of big data increases with wider uh, usage, we also need to recognize that these risks are also increasing. And actually, critical infrastructure protection from cyber threats is one of the most important efforts by Japanese government agencies. With these environmental changes in mind, NISC is strengthening public-private partnerships, such as information sharing on cyber incidents and best practices. And, um, sorry, I don't have a slide, but and another aspect of big data security, I'd like to briefly introduce the best practices of using big data for improving information security measures. Actually, this kind of case was uh, mentioned in the morning session by, by, by Shimafek. Uh, National Institute of Information and Communication Technology, NICT, has been developing a system called NICTA, which observes, analyzes, and counters cyber attacks by utilizing huge amount of network data collected by darknet sensors. And actually, two years ago, I was in that laboratory, and if there is a very excellent system. And in order to assure a security network where a huge amount of data travels, I think this kind of big data analysis effectively provides solutions for counteracting cyber threats. Um, next slide, please. Uh, finally, I'd like to quickly introduce you an overview of government strategies and action plans on information security. Since NISC was established in 2005, comprehensive information strategies, action plans, and information security measures for government agencies and critical infrastructure operators have been issued. Uh, these strategies or action plans also describe measures to ensure big data security or cloud security. And the very uh, lower part of this slide, there are also several practical guidelines for cloud security issued by such agencies as NIC, METI, and uh, IPA. 
Next, please. Here, I'd like to summarize my presentation. Um, as we all recognize, use of big data has the potential to drastically change the economic and social structures. Uh, if we think about IT development history, IT has been developed and diffused rapidly in 1990s, followed by challenges of information security in 2000. So now, secure and safe use of IT is our common understanding. So similarly, secure and safe use of big data is our starting point to make the best use of its potential. Um, it is important to manage the risk properly, even in a rapidly changing environment. So you should not be afraid of risks too much, though you should not trust without understanding the situation. In order to do that, for example, referring to guidelines on information security or privacy may be useful as well as learning practices in this rapidly developing area. And with regard to international cooperation, since enormous uh, potential of big data is now recognized worldwide, so there should be common challenges among, current, uh, among countries. So as a first step of international cooperation, sharing of best practices such as how risks are recognized, what kind of measures are taken, and what kind of data are shared to whom should be beneficial. It should be also useful if bad or favorable practices can be shared, as well as best practices. And furthermore, Japan is now promoting international standardization of information security management guidelines for the use of cloud computing services. So this kind of international standard will greatly contribute to real-life environment where cloud services can be safely used. So it is very appreciated, very appreciated if Korea, US, Malaysia, <laughs> Indonesia, and China can collaborate with us in promoting this activity. Thank you very much.